great. Um, I'll probably go into a, another video some other time about details about that. what works for me um, you know I haven't had like a lot of trolling motors in my life or anything um, I'm just reviewing this particular trolling motor so you know take it for what it is so I know this is kind of early but uh I just kind of wanted to give you a, a good idea of, you know, how far down that it still goes. It's probably about a, a foot below the water line when it's deployed. And I still have about, I don't know, six, eight inches I can drop up here to go lower. As you can saw, see in some of those other, um, videos when I was out by the jetty it was getting kind of wavy there was a couple times at this length that the impeller came out of the water so you know in certain circumstances that a couple extra inches drop might be useful but that's the depth that when it's deployed watch this current Seeing dead even right there. And I got a good breeze coming this way. I don't think I've really budged much at all. I don't know how long the battery's gonna last fight that current, but. holding up just fine. Let's see how this goes. Head anchor on the move. It's holding it in spot. close to about when I hit the button. All right, I'm gonna hit the anchor here in just a second. Now, let's see what uh, where the boat winds up. like right where I hit the button so it seems to be working per pretty well in that aspect you know this plate kind of flexes a bit more than I like when I power it up see so we're gonna put another bolt right there or something
but that's under like full power so which uh, doesn't happen very often okay as you can see here I, I put another bolt in there when it was uh, under full power going this direction it would flex a lot and I'm gonna do another little test here and I'm gonna just kick it into full power and see how much it flexes flexes a little bit but not near as bad as before flexes a little bit but not near as bad as before try the other way Yeah, flex is just a, probably a little more than I would like. But next time I'll definitely go half inch. May swap that out in the future, but last thing I need is that thing to crack and fall off. But it's got a couple more bolts in it over here, so that shouldn't, shouldn't really be a problem, hopefully. Um. Well, um, just a little kind of overview of the install. Um, I just ran the wires, hardwired it through. I didn't put a plug or anything in there because I didn't want to deal with, um, you know, making it easier for somebody to steal it. I got so many bolts to this thing. It's going to be, you know, somebody's going to have to bring a lot of tools or just hack this whole quarter panel off to take that thing off. Um, anyway, I got the wires run through the anchor locker and then down into here. Um, I have it cut through. And I just put a on off switch right here and um, just put the wires run down and then they go underneath the through here and into the head and they just come through the wall right here and um, I got my battery underneath this step in the head and it, you have to disassemble this whole thing to get this battery out and so it's in there pretty secure and um, I got a circuit breaker right here 60 amp and then these are the wires that run to the probably could secure this up just a little bit more but um, back here to the 12 volt to 36 volt uh, charging system that ch ch comes off the um, 12 volt uh, boat battery and then it I'm not sure how it works it's magic but it makes uh, 12 volt into 36 volt to charge this single battery you could however you know if you didn't want to use you know a battery like this you could do three and put three in here there's room for it but it just eats up some space and it's uh, uh it's just a lot of uh, um, weight to add it to the front of the boat here. Um, but what's kind of nice is, you know, that locks up too. So I'm to, somebody really have to want to steal this stuff to to get it out. But um, that's how I kind of wired it up and everything. And you know, it's so far it's working well. The battery never dies. Um, I never even gets below like 80 percent. Every time I'm running up and down this. Uh, uh, the inshore here or just are, are running hard it is charging the whole time and it seems to use the battery life well um, I'll be out here all day it doesn't run down um, always keeps it in place so there's that here's just a quick retrieval of it I like having it sticking up just a little bit too so I put my hand down there and pull up and it pulls right in I haven't had any issue yet with it contacting the anchor or anything like that. Blades are fine. So I think it's in a good position here. Plus it's, you know, it's it's pretty far enough in. So like if I'm out of dock or something, it's not sticking out and running into anything. So I kind of like where it's at. Also another issue I've been kind of having is uh, the Simrad. Um, it uh 
like it kept telling me that it it, it, it couldn't sense the autopilot or whatever and um, then I was having trouble with the the um, this anchoring it would even with the remote it still wouldn't anchor and um, it, that would just happen every once in a while when it was uh, um, plugged in um, it just every once in a while when I started up I'd put the motor down it would it would just not register like it would the, the little light for the satellite would come on but it just couldn't anchor for some reason and then I would unplug the um, NEMA 2000 cable and turn the power off turn the power back on and then it would work by the uh, remote again and it would anchor just fine so for now I've been just leaving it unplugged and in an emergency or whatever the battery die in this thing if I really need to or whatever I can plug it back up and it may or may not work with the Simrad. You know, it's supposed to work pretty cohesively with uh, uh, Lawrence, and Lawrence is, uh, from what I understand, they make Simrad. So I'm not sure what the, you know, maybe there's a firmware issue or something, or, but um, I just really haven't delved into it yet. But uh, that's the only real issue I've had with this thing so far. Um, everything else has been pretty smooth. Um, it, it moves the boat quickly, it keeps me in spot. Um, as you can see in the rest of the video, it um, you know it's do it does its job and it's been a game changer just being able to move from dock to dock without having to pull up anchor or anything like that and um, like I said you know I haven't really dropped that anchor in like two months because of uh, it just I haven't need to and um, battery never dies it pulls it so you know I'm I'm gonna give this rating a two thumbs up um, if you're ever considering it um, I definitely would get the 72 inch shaft for the R200. Um, you know, some people say they use the 60, but yeah, you know, you only got a few more inches right there that, that you can see, you know, if that went all the way down, um, you know, uh, the 60 inch would just, you know, it would, it could probably get you by, but I definitely get the hundred pound thrust and, you know, the 36 volt, cause it's, it's, I, I, I think it's worth it. And especially when the current gets moving, um. But uh, that's kind of what my review is, and hopefully you can make up your mind and decide what you want to get. But this is what works for me. Um, you know, I haven't had like a lot of trolling motors in my life or anything. Um, I'm just reviewing this particular trolling motor, so you know, take it for what it is. So.